Hi, I'm George Pearson, and these are just a few examples from some of the training videos I have here on YouTube. Now, when you're working with the training, following along the training, if you want to get the materials I used in the training, just go to the description down below and click on the link that's at the top of the description, and this will take you to a page where you can download the materials. Please subscribe, click the like button, and of course, always share on Facebook, Twitter, or wherever. I really appreciate that. Okay, let's go ahead and get started with the video. In this Photoshop Elements video, I'm going to show you how to take a severely faded photo, and this is the actual original photo, and fix the fade and convert it into something a little more like this and more presentable, bring all of our colors back again. Now, it's a fairly easy process, and you can take it as far as you want and adjust your colors anywhere you want to. And it's going to be using blending modes and then some adjustment layers. We'll start off with the background here. I'm just going to get rid of this layer altogether. Let's just trash that one. Get rid of that. There we go. So here's my original file. Make a copy of that file, that layer. And on this one, what I want to do is I want to add the colors here into this one. So I'm just adding in more color by multiplying the colors. We can do that with our blending modes. Come down here, down to multiply right there and notice how it's already brought in a lot of colors there's the first and here's our second one you can do the several steps i'll just copy this layer there's a third step that's not too bad at that point and i can do one more for a fourth if you want to have a lot more color it's up to you on how many steps you want to go or how many steps you need depending upon your image i'm just going to stick here with three on this i think that's about right so the values are about right i brought a lot of the color back in Notice though that this picture is really heavily on weighted on the yellow side. There's lots of yellows, a bit of green in there, a lot of red, of course, in the face. What we've lost in here is the blues. So the blues faded out of the picture. So I can't really put blue in, although I could use a blue filter and add some blue in that way, but it's easier to remove this yellow tint. We'll do that with an adjustment layer. So up here to layers and new adjustment layer, hue saturation choose OK. Here we go. Now on the hue saturation you have several channels. Master channel controls the whole image. Reds, yellows, greens, cyans, blues, magentas. You can see where your problems are just by clicking on one of these channels and then moving the hue. You can see here we have a lot of red values in the skin tones but not really any place else. So we can use this to adjust our skin tones. I'll just put this back to zero again. Just type in zero. Let's look at our yellows. A lot of yellow in there. See, so we have yellows in the face and, of course, the whole background. Let me put that back to zero again. So our reds and our yellows. If we look at our greens, see, if I move the green, there's not really anything happening. There's a little bit right up in there that you really can't see. So we can ignore the green channel. That's not going to be a problem. Cyan, so it's kind of a light blue. Notice there's nothing in here in the cyan, so we can ignore the cyan. So far this image just has reds and yellows in it. Look at our blues, obviously nothing in the blues. See there, so put that back to zero again, and finally we'll check our magentas. And there's really nothing in the magenta either. So this image really is only in the yellow and the red range. I'll start with the yellows in this case. I want to tone down that yellow I really don't know what color the hat is. It could be white. It could be a yellow hat already. It could be something else. It's hard to say. But I can, you know, move my control back and forth. If I go to the right, it gets really weird. Go to the left a little bit, it begins to look more natural. Now, so I'm beginning to see a bit too much red in here, but it's already everything else is improving. So I'm just looking at the skin tones. And I'll take the yellows a little bit to the left. And that knocks off a lot of that real hard yellow in the background. If you want to, you can adjust the saturation a bit, maybe bring the saturation down just a touch. And you can lighten the image up a little bit, and I think we're looking pretty close. Let's now take a look at our red channel. There we go. If we go to the right, it goes more yellow. That's not what I want. If we go to the left, it goes a little bit more red into the skin. And I think just a, just a touch to the left side there brings back a bit of the flesh color in here. So I think our color 
is now pretty good on that image. We've already taken care of that color. Now the we've lost a bit of values in here. So I can bring back some values back into the picture again with another adjustment layer. So let's go up to our layers again and new adjustment layer. Let's do our levels this time. And here are all of the values in our picture. Notice there's nothing really on the pure white and nothing really on the, on the pure dark. So I'm going to move the dark in a little bit. This just shifts what's black into our dark gray. So it makes the blacks a little bit richer. Same thing on the white side. Move this over towards the whites and it makes the whites a little bit richer. This also, by moving these in, tends to make the picture a little bit more contrasty. This is our mid-gray point and you can adjust this if you want to a little bit. I'll put it right about there. So I think our flesh tone is looking good. Only thing we really have left at this point is her teeth. Her teeth are still a little bit yellow. I want to solve that teeth, but I don't want to be damaging anything else in here. So I need to separate out the teeth. Now here's where I'm going to be doing a special trick. I have all these layers. I'm going to merge all these layers onto a new layer up here. And let me just bring up a little keyboard shortcut so you can see what it is that I'm going to be doing here. There it is. Okay, now this is a four key keyboard shortcut. On Windows is Control, Alt, Shift, and E. Upper or lower case doesn't matter. So just hold down the Control, Alt, and Shift, and then tap the E. On the Mac it's Command, Option, Shift, and E. Same thing. Okay, let me show you how that works. Have all of your layers selected that you want to have included in your image. Make sure you're on the top layer, and then I'll hold down those keys. The Control, Alt, Shift, hit the E key, and it gives me a new layer that combines all of those layers. It's a really cool keyboard shortcut, one of my favorites. Okay, now I'll just hide this stuff. That's all taken care of. Now here, I want to make a selection of just the teeth. We'll put the teeth on a new layer, and then we'll use a bit of an adjustment layer on those teeth to improve the look of the teeth. So let's just zoom in on our teeth. There we go. And let's just, I guess we can see our option panel down below. And I'll grab the magic wand. And so our tolerance, oh, about 25. Make sure that contiguous is selected. And I'll just click on our, our middle tooth here. Once you've made your first selection, click over here for add. So I now want to just add the rest of these teeth. Went too far, I'll do control Z and back out of that selection. There we go. Okay, so that adds the teeth into our selection. Let's now make a new layer of that selection. So layer, new, layer via copy. There we go. Now on this layer, we're going to do an another adjustment layer. So layer, adjustment layer, hue saturation. Now this time I want to make sure that this just affects just the tooth layer, which is layer 2 right now. So make sure you have that checked. Use previous layer, that's the tooth layer, to create clipping mask. Choose OK. Alright, now we can take a look at our teeth in here. Let's check our yellows. There's a lot of yellow in there. As you can see, let's check our reds. There's a bit of red in there as well. So we have yellow and red. Again, the same things. Let's go to our yellows. I'm going to bring down the saturation a bit on the yellow. It brings down the amount of yellow. Let's bring up the lightness in here. I don't want to get rid of all of the yellow. The teeth begin to look fake. I don't want to get too bright. Either that will, again, make the teeth look fake. You want them to look natural. We just want to take out some of the yellow. By taking out the, the all of the coloration in here, we're taking out just the yellows you can see here. We're desaturating our yellows and making them a little bit lighter bring them back up to a more natural looking tooth color. Okay, let's now just go ahead and zoom back out here. There we go. There is our finished image. Now again, you can control how much color you add back in by how many layers you use down here, and then we can always work with these controls to adjust the settings as well. But there it is. Let's just bring the background layer back in again. I'll I'll hide those layers. So there's the original. And then here is our fix. And there's the fix on the teeth. So there it is. That is how you can bring the color back into a severely faded photograph. 
Thank you for watching this special Photoshop photography project video. Don't forget to subscribe so that you will get first notice of new project videos in the future. Just click on this link right here where it says subscribe here. You can get all 12 project videos in this series along with 26 special videos demonstrating the tools and techniques that I used in these projects by clicking on this link right down here. And then thank you again for watching this training video.